this week uh, we'll hopefully just try to get end up uh, finish our introduction. So, <coughs> the reason I wanted to do what I did did last week and this week is <coughs> so that we can can really know what's so unique and significant about the Bible because we call it the Word of God and calling it the Word of God and the Bible the Word of God just because we say it or so we've heard it or just because uh, uh, the Bible says it doesn't mean anything unless we can determine that it's true okay and it's different because what, what because the Bible we said last week uh, transforms lives it creates wisdom and joy and there's a reason for that uh, and the reason for that is it's God's word so we want we want to we want to our faith in God is not blind faith we don't just have faith just for faith okay because that doesn't make a lot of sense you got you need, you know, there needs to be some evidence some reason for you having faith and so uh, which means that there's evidence for evidences of what God has done for other folk okay? evidences for what he's done for us things that are in the Bible that he talks about that we can point to as evidence that, 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 that believing God makes sense right so we want so we want to we want to know, we want we want to be confident in the book that we say it's God's word and that gives us instructions we want to be confident in that that it is in fact the word of God that it is it is supernatural in its creation it's supernatural in the things we get from it so we, we we want to we want to validate that for ourselves so that we can talk to other people when they say oh yeah the Bible is written by some men the Bible's got mistakes in it the Bible doesn't make sense so we want to talk about that uh, Last week and this week, and then next week, I want to, we want to kind of get into the, the, the way the Bible is structured and that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, so uh, just some little, little, little comments. The, the, the Bible, as I kind of said earlier, is the uh, one we, we, we talked about that last week. It's the best selling book in history, best selling book is. of all time, and still is. Still is. Uh, but it's also one of the most controversial books <laughs> that there is around. Uh, it spans centuries of history. It has different kind of styles in it. You know, there, there's history, there's poetry, there's a bi there's biography, there's letters, uh, and it it and, and all of it culminates in Jesus. All of all of these things that's written over centuries by all of these people on continents culminates in the person of Jesus. The Old Testament is primarily a a, a record of God's dealing with the Jews. That's his chosen people. That's what the Old Testament is. Uh, the New Testament continues that, right? Continues that with uh, what happened when, when Jesus uh, was on the earth and what happened after his death. Uh, uh, the creation of the church. So we got the Old Testament which concentrates on, on the record of God's dealing with his people. The New Testament continues that dealing, but it also introduces now Jesus Christ and his ministry and then what happened after his death and the, the creation of the church. Uh, so uh, today, and we've heard it even from, uh, it's hot in here now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, was, it was cool. <clears throat> we've heard it. We, we even hear it from... The pulpits in some in some of our liberal churches and in, in theological seminaries a lot that that our view of the Bible really doesn't matter and we hear people say well it really doesn't matter whether you believe the Bible or not so long as you gain strength and insights from it. because if you read it uh, if you read it as kind of a self help book right yeah it it it, it it makes some sense so a lot of people say well that 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 it really doesn't matter. Uh, um, what your view of the Bible is. Well, the only problem with that is this. is In the Bible, there are miracles. Right? Mm -hmm. And if it if we don't believe 
in whether if, if if we have a sense that it really doesn't matter whether you believe in that or not, then you got to discount the greatest miracle of all, which was Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. So so you can't you can't say that our view of the Bible doesn't matter. You know, uh, uh, we could you could you could say oh, okay. You could, say, you could, if you want to, you know, you could say, okay, it doesn't make sense that the parting of the Red Sea, uh, that's impossible. Uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the plagues of Egypt, that's impossible. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense that this guy was, that the whale swallowed this guy, he survived. So none of that makes sense. So it really doesn't matter what you think about the Bible. But then if you discount all of those miracles, right. You got a discount, and that's what <laughs> right, 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 and that's what happens. And so you got, so you got to, you got to take the whole, the Bible as a whole, and you got to consider the supernatural. You do have to consider that. Now, there's evidence for a lot of stuff, okay, but you can't discount, and there's evidence, uh, some archaeological evidence for some of the miracles that people say were mm -hmm. impossible things. So. Uh, but you, you you have to still consider the supernatural. There's some stuff we just cannot explain. explain. Mm -hmm. But if you can explain the other stuff, mm -hmm. then you could say, well, this supernatural stuff makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we want to try to get to in 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 the, in the, in this study. Uh, um, so we 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 we've got to we've got to be sure. That we're and we're confident that the Bible is true, now, uh, uh, and that and and that what it what it says is true. Everything in the Bible that's written in the Bible is true. Everything in the Bible is not necessarily truth. Truly stated. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> but everything in the Bible is not, not that's written there is not truth because because Satan's Satan's conversation with with Eve is was. It's true in it that, that, that that's, that's recorded. It's not truth. So what I'm you understand it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No. No. What's no, the difference no. between what's true no. and what's true? What's true? Okay. What's true? Okay. Well, it's just like saying okay. the Bible to Jesus. But, what? Uh, what? Well, what was what is true is what God told okay. Adam and Eve about the the the, 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 the not to eat the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. What? 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 Satan told Eve, Eve was a lie, was a lie. Right. but they're both recorded. That's gotcha. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So we want to say, we say what I'm saying. The, the Bible, the Bible is true in terms of what is there. Everything there is not the truth. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now it does. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Now that so, makes sense. Okay. Well, you give another example of that. Okay. Uh, uh, let me think. Let me let me try to think of another one. Uh, is no. I, 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 of course, say Joe, but that's that's not. Yes. Is that yes, example? that's another example. Okay, another example. What you, you remember? You remember when Job? Uh, you remember when Job? Uh, um, when 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 Job's friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, when they talk, yeah. we're talking about him right. and, and talking about him and, and, and telling him, and telling him, right, telling him right. that yeah, you, 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 you've yeah, done something. That yeah. we, you have yeah. done yeah. something. Right. You have, and what? So then that, that is what they said to him. So, so it was truly stated, right. okay, but it wasn't the truth. Well, I, I didn't mean to confuse us, but <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Now. So, yeah, that's, everything, yeah. everything. You know, if, if, for example, if if I write, Fred, if I write that you said to me, uh, "I hate you," okay, and I write that, okay, that I've, 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 it is true that I've written that, okay, okay. but I have that, that, what, but, but you what, what you lie. said, right, what I wrote was a lie. Right. Okay, okay. okay, you see what I'm well, saying? I see what you're saying now. So what was written? Was written mm -hmm. because it happened, right. okay? But it's not the truth. Tru the truth. Mm -hmm. not Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, okay. So last week we started talking about the uniqueness of the Bible and why we should believe and why we know it's the Word of God. Uh, uh, you know, first of all, you know, Psalms nineteen seven through ten really kind of says what the Bible 
says about itself. Okay. Psalm 19, 7 through 10. Uh, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey from the honeycomb. So that's what it said. The law of the Lord, when it says the law of the Lord in it, scripture is talking about the word of God at the time, the word of God. Okay? So the law of the Lord, or God's word, transforms, converts the soul, and it gives wisdom and joy. And it's unique, when we talked about it last, year, last week, it's unique because it was written over a period of, of 1,550 years, at least at least 40 human writers, most of who didn't know each other. Right. It was written, they had, and they were from various backgrounds, uh, and it was written over in, in various environments, Paul in prison, uh, Solomon, da Solomon uh, was, was the king, David was on the run for most of the time. John was exiled. <laughs> yeah, John was exiled. And you know what's so funny? I don't know if anyone has even looked at the prophet and kings, yes. and they're at that point right now near where the I know prophet okay. came. To okay. Prophesy. Yeah, okay. When, after he said, I would never want to be king because I would never want to do the things that right. the king was doing. Right. I think that was right now they're in the days of Samuel. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just before David. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. The first yeah, king. I was like, wow. You know what they call it? They were right. King, yeah. right. Right, 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 right. Okay. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. So, 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 the unit, you, that's, you know, that makes the Bible unique. It's written by all those people over all that time, and it's still, it's, it's still, it's still it's, it has a harmonious message. Uh, no other book has been circulated uh, uh, as much as the Bible. It's been translated over, into over 1,200 different languages. I didn't even realize there were 1,200 languages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> translated into over 1,200 different languages. So billions of copies have been published and read. So, uh, so we, you know, so it's unique in that in that in that manner. Uh, but how? So how do we know whether the Bible that the Bible is historically accurate? There's a lot of history in there, right? Right, a lot of Jewish history. Right. Yeah, they got the uh, manuscripts, old manuscripts that they found back in, I think it was uh, 60s or something, early 60s. Mm -hmm. and, and some in the 40s. Uh, right, so, right. So, so, so the, the way, the way, the, I mean, we, you, you, you got to judge history of the Bible just like you judge history. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no difference. That's what you look at. You know, you, so, so, so in history, uh, historical records come from first person accounts. A historian looks to see if the information was written down by somebody who saw it, you know, or was there, or whether it was second or third hand. Uh, and the Bible is primarily eyewitness accounts, right? Moses, if we, because we believe, we believe that Moses wrote the, uh, the first five of the books of the Bible, then, then the, his account of the, uh, the Red Sea would have been a first an eyewitness first account. account, right? Or uh, the, when the the Jericho when, when the walls fell. Okay, when Joshua would have written that or or told somebody, it was a, it was an eyewitness account. The disciples, those guys who wrote Matthew, Mark, or Matthew, Luke, Matthew and John. Okay were disciples, and they actually sat there with Jesus. So those are first-person accounts. Mark and Luke would have been talking with people, with the, those, those people. people. And so that, so historically, even a historian will tell you that's you can count on that being accurate because it's a first-person account. The other part about the Bible is that we talked a little bit about that last week. Uh, uh, this group of folk describes. Who would who would right? They they would they they would copy 
the scrolls from one to another. Kind of like the old, that's the ancient version of a photocopy machine. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were, exactly. They were copying. <laughs> but they had rules. They had rules uh, along the rules to make sure that they copied it exactly. Remember, remember what I said last week? They had a specified number of columns throughout the book that they, they, they always had to be the same. Uh, the lengths of the column, the size of the columns had to be the same from scroll to scroll. They had, they had, they had the exact same number of letters, exact same number of words. Uh, and the, the example of, uh, that I found was going through here, they said, for example, they might have known that there were 1,653 A's in a book, right? When, it, but if, and if they counted it, and there were 1,654 in there, they throw that scroll away start and start over. Did you ever find the name of what they were called, those no. translators? <laughs> no, it starts oh, okay. with an M. <laughs> I don't know how I can uh, tell okay. you. <laughs> <clears throat> but, okay, so, 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 the, so it, it was recorded with extreme care. You know, when it's first person accounts, it was recorded with extreme care. And then the other piece of this is important is that and especially over the last hundred years or so, continuing, archaeology has pr is proving that the Bible is true. Uh, there's there's uh, uh, Jericho, for example. There, there have been some digs around Jericho, and what they found is that the the walls of Jericho fell outward. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's recorded when it was recorded in in Joshua is that when the walls fell they walked right in right, they walked right okay in. so but so typically though in in those days if you if if you were going to capture a city and you knock the walls down the walls would be knocked down yeah. from the outside right. in right right so these those digs have 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 indicated that the walls fell out well the only explanation is that. Supernatural. supernatural, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, that the attack was supernatural because it was written Nobody that the walls fell and it walked in, right? right. Uh, uh, they, they they found they found uh, the pool of uh, uh, what a what a blind man uh, was yeah. was healed. Mm -hmm. uh, Salome pool. Oh, they, they 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 found they found that. There's another example. For years and years and years, there are there are written in 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 the Old Testament. A references to the Hittite Empire, H I T T E. It, if, as a matter of fact, uh, it, uh, in uh, in uh, the genealogies in Genesis, Genesis, if you go to Genesis 10, mm -hmm. 15, um, let's say Canaan begot Sidon, his Sidon. first one, and Heth. Now Heth would have been the uh, uh, where, from where the, the Hittites came from, in Genesis chapter fifteen, eighteen through twenty-one. I want to go there? Genesis fifteen. Oh, fifteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eighteen through twenty-one. Uh, in the verse twenty, is verse twenty, the Hittites are mentioned, yeah, the Hittites right? The uh-huh. Okay, no, so now but 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 for years there's there was been there's been no record of any nation ever of the Hittites, the Empire. So so uh uh, uh the critics of the Bible were indicate where the Bible is, is wrong. So if you and so if the Bible's wrong. So if you could find an error in the Bible, then that then you call you can call it into question. The entire, the entire manuscript, right? Well, in 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 1876, it says, archaeologists discovered the evidence of the Hittite nation, uh, and it was learned that the the, the the Hittite nation was was a vast nation, and the archaeologists discovered 10,000 clay tablets <coughs> in what in the Hittite. Capital. So that was proof. Now archaeology has proved now that these people, which they said there was no evidence of, <coughs> did in fact exist. Uh, a lot of people have thought that the, that the references to Solomon's wealth are great, have been greatly exaggerated. 
Oh, right? I don't think so. Well, I know a lot of people think have thought, thought that, right? Yeah, they thought it, you know, that that that's been a great great exaggerated. Because it says in First Kings ten twenty three, it says King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the world in riches and wisdom. Okay, so a lot of people thought. Pfft. Mm. All right. Well, what's happened is that uh, again, recovered archaeological records in the, of the past show that that wealth in the in 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 ancient times was concentrated with the kings, and so and not spread. If you if you remember if if you, if you remember in 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 uh, Genesis, it talks about. Uh, The famine, remember, and and it ends up they end up the, the, the second time they, they don't have and they sell everything on that land and everything to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the scripture says Pharaoh then owns oh, all the land, the, everything but the priest towns, mm -hmm. right? So wealth was concentrated in royalty, so it's very possible that that's not an exaggeration about his wealth. Think they could have buried it with him. Well, they could have buried it with them. But the, the point is, if people thought Solomon's wealth was ex exaggerated, the point is that in, in when, when Solomon lived, wealth was concentrated in the hands of royalty and, and of the kings. Um, they also thought at one time that there was... Uh, uh, go, go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 20. Verses one through six. I hope this isn't real boring to you. For me, it's really interesting. I, I, I have to be careful because, like I said, as teachers, sometimes get get caught up in the stuff. <laughs> and if stuff that might be interesting to me, might not, might be interesting. But next week, we'll get into something I think that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Isaiah chapter 20, verses 1. Uh, verse 1, it's really the one I want to read. Uh, in the year that the chief commander sent by Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it. During that time, the Lord had spoken through Isaiah of him. Well, uh, uh, that it was once claimed that there was that actually was no historical records no, didn't show that there was ever an Assyrian king with that name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because there was there was no place in any other record where the name of that king was. Then, though, uh, they dis uh, they they discovered in a place called Karasabad, K H O R S A B A D, Iraq. Okay, mm -hmm. they discovered, actually discovered his palace, Sargon's palace, uh, and it was it was uh, uh, um, what was recorded on the walls of that palace was exactly what's in verses two through six of Isaiah. Where did you say it was? It was located when? Uh, when did they find it? In in, in 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 the nineteenth century, I don't have the date. Mm -hmm. It spoke of God. No, the events. Oh, the, the, the events. The events that happened. Where they talked about uh, the. Uh, uh, here, let me read it. Uh, in the year that the chief commander sent Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it. During that time. Uh, the Lord has spoken through Isaiah, son of Amos, saying, Go take off your sackcloth and remove the sandals from your feet. And he did so, going naked and barefoot. The Lord said, As my servant Isaiah has gone naked and barefoot three years as a sign and omen against Egypt and Cush, so the king of Assyria will lead his, the captives of Egypt and the exiles of Cush, young and old alike, naked and barefoot, uh, bare to buttocks to Egypt's shame. So what, what was described here is on the walls, is what's happened, the, the attack and the leading away of the, of the captives. It was actually found on the walls of this palace. Again, another, another pr pr proof that what was recorded in the Bible actually did happen. Uh, another one was, uh, was one, a king that we talk about all the time because we read it 
in the Bible, uh, and it's in Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Verse 1. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, king. Belzar the king he made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. Okay. Now he's the one that saw the writing on the wall. Right. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, now, we, we recorded history though. Okay. Says that the last king, and, and, and it was after it was after that, and saw the writing on the wall. And that night, which you read later on, the 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 the, Assyri the, the, the Persians captured mm -hmm. Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But was there another king that well, was co heir the, the, Right, with him? right. Yeah, the last king of Babylon in recorded history is a guy named uh, Nabonidus, N A B O N I D U S, according to rec according Recor to recorded history, right? But tablets were found later on, okay. Indicating that Belshazzar, okay, was this guy's son. Now, here's what here's what here's what you need to understand. Uh, what does he? What does it say in uh, Daniel five verse sixteen? Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means. You will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck, and you will be made the third highest ruler of the kingdom. Okay. Now, okay. If why, why, right? So, but but why wouldn't if it's, if it's that important? Why wouldn't Belshazzar make Daniel the second, <laughs> giving the second highest ruler? Because, because, right, right. Because, right, right. Because right because his this Belshazzar was a co-regent. Of his father, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Nabonidus. Uh, he, so he was co regent in Babylon. Now, the, the Babylonian Empire was very large, mm -hmm. right? And it would include an area more than just, well, Babylon. just Babylon. So, okay, so though history records Nabonidus as the last king, Belshazzar, the record they found, was his co regent. So the, he could only give Daniel the third highest position in the kingdom. Because his dad, was number one. He was number, number two. two. Mm -hmm. So the, the highest position he could give would be that, place that. right, right. So, so again, pandemic. again, what we've got is an instance here where where people you where people have questioned the accuracy of the Bible, where archaeology, not somebody what somebody thought, mm -hmm. what things that have been found really validate and prove what the Bible says is accurate. You were going to say something. So, but I thought uh, Belshazzar's father was dead by the time he took reign. Uh, well, according according to when, no no according to the according to these tablets that were found mm -hmm. that uh, Belshazzar was served at, as a co regent. We mean he was a, I mean his father was king mm -hmm. and he was a co regent. Right now, the Bible doesn't record Nebuchadnezzar's name at all. No, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't right. record right. the name at all. Right. It 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 because it, it, it you got Nebuchadnezzar, and then right. Belshazzar is the next named. Right. King, exactly. Right. Doesn't. So, but but that doesn't mean that he didn't exist. The Bible doesn't record every, every detail. It doesn't record every detail. It gives you what's important. Well, you know and what you can you fill in the blanks with with. <laughs> and that's what's important about 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 secular history, and stuff that's written in the Bible. That uh, and, and you, that that nobody knew was scientifically accurate until maybe today. today. Why? 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 All, all those all those dietary restrictions, okay? Mm -hmm. That 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 they gave them. Nobody really knew why they shouldn't eat this or eat that or eat this or eat that until we more recently now we understand why you know why you you're only supposed to eat stuff out of the sea that has has scales and fins so like otherwise because other other the bottom feeders right right nobody knew that 
Right. They didn't know that then. They didn't know it then. Right. Yeah. They didn't know. It then. Right. Yeah. They didn't know it. Another thing that, that, that I didn't yeah. know until I was reading this, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the requirement was that the boys would be would be circumcised on the eighth day. Eighth day, right. yeah. Right. Okay. What's, what's been learned is that on the eighth day is the height of whatever it is in your system where the, where the blood Blue will... will uh, Coagulate. Yes, eight, eight, it's eight days. And stop if it from right, but if you do it before that, it's not going to coagulate. Nobody knew that. <laughs> that's deep. That, and but, it, but it's recorded. But it's recorded. But right, and it's recorded in the Bible. So that's the another reason to be. It's scientifically accurate. Uh, the the stuff that that Job talks about the stars and stuff. Nobody really knew that mm. then when it was written. Um, um, it talks about it talks about that somewhere in the Bible where it talks about the the expanse of the universe and the sense that the universe continues to exp- grow, 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 grow. Expand, expand, What expand. Astrono- astrono- astronomy tells you today that 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 the stars are getting further and further and further away from the Earth. So right. nobody knew or any of those things when they were written. So that's the other thing about it. It's scientifically accurate. Stuff was written then when nobody nobody knew. The folk that wrote it had no <laughs> had no scientific. It was just written. That's what that's what that's what the Holy Spirit led them to write. So that's another reason we can be certain that the Bible is accurate. And if it's accurate, if the Bible is accurate, then the redemption story is accurate. That's the important piece of this. Is is God's plan for redeeming mankind after Adam and Eve? So. And if if all that other stuff is accurate, then what it what then the sacrifice is accurate. The the, the redemption that we have through Christ Jesus is accurate. The, the 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 his death, burial, and resurrection is accurate. And the results of his death, burial, and resurrection is if we believe it and accept him, is that we now have eternal life. That's what's important. But we gotta understand if, that, if that's what we recorded, we gotta believe that. And the reason to believe that is because everything else there is accurate. Exactly. Plus, don't ever forget we gotta hey, gotta account for the supernatural. We have to account because there's oh, yeah. some stuff you oh, yeah. some stuff that has no explanation. Yeah, that's supernatural. Right. You just have to you have to believe it. Right. I mean, and so you gotta believe it. If, if everything else in the Bible says is 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 is. is, is if I can say that it's true, then the fact that it tells in the tells in the Bible that uh, that I'm being dwelled by the Holy Spirit, then that's true. One question about the Bible: Are uh, are epiphanies still occurring today? No. You know how Christ came down and into a person. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't believe. There's no need. There's no need. There's no need. There's no need. There's no need anymore to do that. No theophany. Yeah, theophany. There's no need for that anymore. There's no need. There's no need for Christ to come now and appear to man because because they just got you and Jesus, baby, and darling, and Fred, and the Holy Spirit, Ronald. Right, right, right. So you don't. There's no need for that anymore. So he's got us to be. We are his representative in his ambassador. Heavenly Father, thank you for thank you for this.